After the formal lecture, we will have a slideshow to illustrate for us uh, some of the issues which will be mentioned in the lecture. So without much ado, Dr. Sohnamai. Okay, you are a candidate. All right, inshallah, it will go through. Inshallah. We make prayers for that. That Allah makes it uh, come through. Well, welcome to Oslo and to Norway. Thank you. you are the people who have brought the sunshine like this on 1st September. So thank you for that too. And uh, you're welcome and uh, uh, here you are. What makes you Ahmed Vala an unviolent personality? For the false face of, um, of Islam, with the advent uh, of the means of mass communication and transportation, the world has become a large village. In such a village, unfortunately, it has become easier to influence people, bringing to the fore the power and the importance of the media. There are now more than 1.6 billion Muslims in the world, and Islam is the world's fastest growing religion ever. If the ever carnage that Muslims and non-Muslims witness were typically of the faith and Islam truly inspired and justified such violence. Its growth and increasing presence of Muslim in the West would be a terrifying prospect. Fortunately, this is not the case at all. The very word Islam, um, which means surrender, is related to the Arabic salam or peace. The fact that there is violence emanating from parts of the Muslim world does not mean that violence is a product of Islam itself. It is important to highlight that. The complicated truth of the matter is that the extremist violence that have overtaken a majority of Muslim countries is a product of complex political and social circumstances. They include colonial legacies and more modern Greek power politics and the artificial borders that they bequeathed the region. The violence is perpetrated by official structures that favor a few over the many in the collapse of government institutions. Religion certainly is a part of the mix because it is important to highlight that when people say that religion has nothing to do with that violence, it is not considering the matter at itself. It does have certainly to do with religion, especially in fragile nation or under authoritarian regimes. But that comes into play not because of the nature of the faith, but it's important to know that it's because of the way it's abused and manipulated. Islam uh, has been through that manipulation and bad interpretation since years. After that, we need definitely to understand the perspective of pacifism. What is pacifism for our uh, common researchers and academics? Uh, we understand it in two possible meanings, you know, including the action of supporters of peace or doctrine of nonviolence. 
although related, um, the two concepts def differ from the point of view of the theory and practice. So pacifism is a doctrine and action in favor of peace or peacemaking. The vision of a pacifism is associated with a person refusing to use all kind of violence, physical, moral, or others. So to understand this uh, dimension of uh, pacifism that I am talking about, it will be normal to pass through uh, some of the known pacifism, uh, pa pacifists, excuse me, such as Henry David Thoreau or Mahatma Gandhi. This is, uh, to start with Thoreau, an African philosopher, an American philosopher, uh, that who we owe um, the first theory of passive resistance. We all know that he defined it in his book in 1849, Civil the, the, the Disobedience. The only individual responsible um, can, he said, guiding the destiny of man, who uh, shall in no case to submit in the authority of um, the civilization government. For Henry David Thoreau, the law is then only a form of violence that claims to be legitimate. For Mahatma Gandhi, it is another approach of pacifism. For him, the concept of civil disobedience means passive resistance in isolation from the rest of the world does not fit his ideal of struggle against um, violence. Then he who defends the right of thousands of Indians at that time, migrant workers, under the policy um, increasingly humiliating the South African authorities who do not care and hide their colored population. So this perspective of Mahatma Gandhi of pacifism, it is important to, to understand and before coming into Shah Obama's approach of pacifism that will, that will allow us to do a little guiding in between um, those. And there are a lot more. Some of uh, people talk about Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr. as pacifists, but I think that these two would be necessarily um, highlighted to understand the perspective. So now the Islamic perspective of Islam, of, um, of pacifism. What do Islam think about this notion of pacifism? Um, I will say that pacifism is Islam itself. The root of the word, like I say um, earlier, Islam refers to making peace in a mutual, peaceful environment, greetings, rescue, safety, being secure, finding peace, reaching salvation, and will be, will be or being far from danger, attending goodness, etc. The, submit, the submitting, the self and our being, here means submitting to justice and rightness in order to reach peace and safety and being in a peaceful environment by armed free will. Everything in Islam is about free will. From this perspective, Islam is these three um, fundamental object, submitting to God, accepting his authority, as well as obeying his orders. One's total submission to God and serving only him, embracing the messages of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and abiding by them. In this sentence, a Muslim is, one, is the one who is under the peaceful and safe shade of Islam. God wants a Muslim to live in a safe and peaceful environment and to make a force for the spread and continuity of peace. So in this, um, in this part, we will highlight uh, the, the, the importance of the social peace that um, the Prophet, peace, peace be upon him, exported uh, about Islam. In the Quran, chapter 5, verse 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he who kills a soul, unless it is uh, on a legal punishment, and we will uh, come there later, because it is, um, there is a perspective of legal punishment in Islam, um, for murder or for causing disorder and corruptions, as do all these terrorists responding in the name of ISIS or other organizations, will be as if he had killed all humankind. So God, the God of Islam and other religions also say that the one who killed in order to um, bring disorder is like he killed all humankind. So that is a great and interesting answer for those who think that definitely all Muslims are anarchists or, or terrorists. And when the Prophet be upon, peace be upon him explained that uh, Islam's potential to contribute to safety and peace in society, he specified it one goal in his time as the following. He said a rider while um, traveling from Sana'a city in Yemen uh, to Hadramut, a region in the southeast of Arabian Peninsula, fearing none but God, or a wolf as regard his sheep. It means that someone can travel to a point A 
uh, to a point B, uh, fear, fearing only God or um, an enraged animal, but not fearing um, violence coming from other human beings. So if we consider the troubles due to the extreme violence Muslims were exposed to both in Medina and Mecca during the period um, of living of the Prophet, be, peace be upon him, we can understand how meaningful was this message expressed by the Prophet. It does not include, evidently, any desire for revenge against any person or group that is important to know. Instead, it's only expressed an ardent desire for a violent, free role for all. The Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded us to maintain social solidarity and cooperation, to open our hearts to our fellows and to help one another all the times. He used to say frequently, do not cut relations between each other. Do not turn your backs on each other. Do not grow hotter between each other. Oh, God's servants became brothers and sisters, black or white, Muslims or non-Muslim. This was the potential message of the Prophet be upon him. That, is, that was definitely the prophet, the, the prophet of Islam. And following his teachings will never lead us to violent extremism or terrorism, not at all. That's why we conclude in this matter that Islam is definitely a religion of peace and tolerance according to the Quran and according to the message of the Prophet, be of peace be upon him. Now it is important to know that in every religion there are these um, un usual um, interpretation and relativism that we definitely use to justify terror in the name of a religion, and this is not actually the real face of Islam. So um, after presenting that um, context of Islam and peace and the fact that this is the real aspect of Islam, it will be important to consider um, telling you why are we considering a black Sufi master in the name of Shah Madhubamba as one of the biggest uh, icons of nonviolence. In many parts of the world, we do know, there have been attempts to portray Islam before and after as a religion of terror in response to this lack of awareness about what Islam definitely is, this ignorance and the total unwillingness to learn as well on behalf of the media and other influential, um, influential organizations, which to some extent arise from nothing less than the evil intentions of those who disseminate and uh, in part do uh, to the fact that Muslims have not been able to respond and represent and also to introduce Islam in the way that it should have been. This is the duty now of Muslims once again to communicate the real truth. A truth by objective interpretation of the holy book of the Quran. A truth by history but also a truth by, funda and fundamentally, by the representation of men and women in their thoughts and deeds who have made this truth an undeniable reality. One of those was the tireless pacifist and resistant, <coughs> Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba. Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba was an African Sufi master who led, during the last century, a successful and completely non-violent struggle against the French colonizer in Senegal. Um, this presentation, as the exhibition which will follow, will explore and try to represent the peaceful perspective of Islamic West Africa through the religious and legacy of a Senegalese Sufi master, poet, and spiritual leader of more than four million Muslims around the globe. Prior to Mahatma Gandhi that I stated later, Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, and others, Shah Mudubamba championed the philosophy of nonviolence in a colonial context. He resisted the French colonial oppression through pacifism and founded in 1883 the Muridia, meaning the seeking for God. The first ever known Sufi order founded by a black African man and now the most dynamic and influential Senegalese Sufi movement which ex exemplifies um, knowledge, human dignity, and the sanctity of work deeply grounded in Sufism, which emphasizes the mystical core uh, and inner aspect of Islam, uh, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's thought and peaceful philosophy, inspired in him an alternative approach of what we call jihad, and we will come through that notion later, centered on knowledge, worship, and forgiveness for his enemies who subjected him to unjust suffering for over three decades. We're talking about 33 years of imprisonment, um, of Shah Bamba. 
uh, Michel Combo um, tell us um, in one of his uh, literary that in this highly tormented um, which tormented area which go through the current world context characterized by the apparent clash of Islamic and Western civilization, the life of a Muslim peacemaker is worth to be highlighted. A Muslim saint who led during the past century a victorious and completely nonviolent struggle. Its rewarding life spent in West Africa was marked by 33 years in prison, but his profound message remains universal and continues to this day through the vibration traditional that he inherited. So it will be important here to highlight um, this notion of jihad because uh, the actual understanding of the definition that we can have today and of people who definitely do not understand the essence of Islam will say that jihad means going to fight and to plant disorder in the name of Islam. Why would Islam want to plant disorder in the world? For what? There is um, this um, important way of understanding the concept of, of Islam in the Quran. It's showing that the Quran and the verses of the Quran were um, literated in the context and in an environment. It is important to understand that. But for Shaykh Ahmad Obama, the definition that he gave to jihad was to fight against yourself, to fight against all the bad and sad vibes which will attack your soul and heart. And that is what jihad means. And that is definitely what the Quran means when he talk about jihad. is fighting your soul and your heart and yourself against bad vibes and, and, and through, um, through all those. So I will share with you um, a little letter that the sheikh wrote in on the point of leaving his second exile in Mauritania. And we will come uh, later in um, the, the process because he was um, led to exile in Gabon. My own actual Gabon. He came back, went to Mauritania, and then when he came back to Senegal, was led in Drogo uh, for the rest of his life. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba say, on the point to leave from Mauritania to exile, all my persecutors, you banded me on the pretense that I am waging a war, a jihad, against you. Indeed, you are right, because I am really combating for the countenance of the Lord. But I am waging my jihad through knowledge, al hulum in, in Arabic, and fearing the Lord, Tahwa in Arabic, as a humble subject of God and the servant of his holy prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the Lord who oversees everything may assuredly bear witness thereof, while others hold materials, weapons to be feared. That's what his words. My two weapons are knowledge and worship, and this is surely my way of fighting. So he made them understand that his conception of jihad was not to fight through guns, weapons, or um, physical violence, but it was in the approach of doing violence to himself so that he may combat his ego. That was Shah Mahmoud perspective of, of jihad, and it is really important to understand it in this environment and context of terrorism and, and um, integrism and people having a, a bad understanding of really what, what Islam wants to want to, uh, the message, the peaceful and tolerant message, message that Islam brings to, to the universe. So indeed, it may be uh, somewhat unexpected <laughs> for many to, uh, in our context, um, tarnished perception of Islam, widely portrayed through mass media and intolerant and intrinsically violent to hear a Muslim black leader who was yet victim of gathering injustice from unbelieving of rulers during 33 years, defending nonviolence, forgiveness, and love for humankind. I would like just to share some of the phrases, um, known phrases of Shaykh Ahmad Bamba to make you, before coming into the, um, the process of, of, of his deportations, so that you may understand uh, definitely his approach of, of peace and, and tolerance. May all humankind benefit from me, oh my Lord. That was a prayer of Shaykh Ahmad Bamba. Make me a source of bliss for all black and white. He didn't have, and at that moment, um, this um, complicated journey that people have today to make difference between white and black people. He um, uh, managed that problem since, since that time. Spare me ever damaging any creators, be they living near me or after, be they Muslims or non-Muslims. Shaykh Ahmad Omar was a black Muslim Sufi son, and yet at that time, he finded a way of coexistence really important way of, of coexistence between Islam, Muslims, and non-Muslims. O oh Lord, he say, lift me to the rank of renovator of the path of Islam. 
out of any hostility in war. He never asked or never went through a path of war or inspiring violence. But yet, he was considered uh, at that ill and was uh, bring to, uh, transported to exile. Um, and uh, it will be definitely important too to understand this approach that he, his inspirings were coming from the Prophet be upon him, but the verse of the Quran. Uh, in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, believers, be standfied for the cause of God and just in bearing witness. Let not groups hostility to you cause you to defate from justice. Be just for it. It's closer to pity. Have fear of God. God is well aware of what you do. So this may be a message and an, an, an important understanding uh, perspective of those who mildly think that Islam inspires violence and terror. This is God's words. Um, the pacifism symbolized so by Shah Ahmed Obama to come back in his deeds um, is away from passive resistance in Turo's approach or civil disobedience in Gandhi's theory. This is not the same. It's not really any form of resistance, but endurance, like I say. He didn't ask for nothing. He was summoned on September 5, 1980, uh, 80, 1895, excuse me, in San Luis, which was uh, the capital um, of uh, West Africa, French West Africa, Afrique Occidentale Française, uh, by the Governor General. He was arrested and imprisoned in the St. Louis, then exiled in Gabon. With these words of the colonial administration, as a basis for his arrest. It is clear from the report that we were able to raise against Ahmed Bamba that he gave no preaching for holy war, but his attitude, his actions, and especially those of his men and students are all suspicious points. And it is really sad to consider that an arrest of a peaceful and respected African leader was based on a simple suspicion of a colonizer. A decision that the Sheikh put it on the account of the devil well, divine well, calling man to return to God, preaching nonviolence, the search for usual knowledge, work, peaceful courage, determination, and also faith in God. He said at that exact moment, I fear only God. I carry my hopes in God. Nothing is enough for me if not faith in science. That's, that was his beautiful answer to the colonizer when they came to pick him up to bring him in exile. So after seven years and nine months in exile in Mayombe, the current Gabon, Sheikh Ahmed Obama returns in Dakar in 1902. The jubilation and, um, that his return uh, greeted pushed the colonial administration again to claim his arrest. For what? A strong column of infantry and spies were sent but faced with the determination of the disciples, they turned back. He was finally arrested a year later to be exiled in this time in Mauritania. All, all the characters were well known to, make, to, 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 to take him away from Senegal because they thought at that moment that if he was not present in the country, um, the, 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 the lead, the, the lead or eventually um, this, the group of disciples which were there at that time will be dismissed. And they didn't know that God's faith and God's decisions were, was otherwise. They didn't know that actually uh, the Murid community will be over 4 million Muslims in the world. So Sheikh Ahmed Obama, in fact, recognized only one authority. And that was the main problem, one truth of his Lord. He was sticking strictly on it. His reference model in thought and his actions was the prophet, peace be upon him based on the service to all humanity, according to the word of the Lord. So who say to Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he sent him for, to be a mercy to all mankind. The implementation process of the colonial administration at that moment took place under the weight of military coercions. The colonizer knew only the language of force, of violence, and that was recorded by it. This culture of physical and moral violence was so his favorite field. And Shah Mudbama was definitely not on that one. The Sheikh affirmed to recognize only one authority, and that was God. The colonial administration took his statement as offensive and sought to push the field he knew best, the one of force, violence, and humili uh, humiliation. So according to the culture 
and fully untrusted practice of peace in his being, the Sheikh did not react or respond to uh, provocations and those humiliations. On the occasion of his transfer to Dakar, immediately after the uh, 1895 trial, which was supposed to send him in Gabon, uh, there was a mark of a long period of deportations by the ferry of the governor in the colony. He was denied it overnight in, hum in unhuman conditions, in a dark and narrow dungeon, doted blades and spikes that prevented him to lie down or even to sit, what made him right at that moment. Every time that I remember um, that night of the governor and his and the, 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 the condition of the detentions which he was held, I suddenly have a tendency to resort my arms and to fight back. But at that same time, the prophet, peace be upon him, forbids me. He is not saying that the prophet came physically and tell him, no, don't do it. He is saying that he based his action on the legacy of the prophet, be, be, peace be upon him. And that legacy was not inspired, was inspired of just peace and tolerance. So the non-balance of Shah Bamba comes in all aspects of his life. His life alone would be enough to eliminate the dimensions of the non-balance of his divine essence. For the Sheikh lived for God and from his childhood. His life could be used one basic education and education for a culture of peace and tolerance. Indeed, he suffered unjust, but he never called for revenge. Instead, he forgave, and better, he even prayed for those enemies who took him far from his family and, um, and loyalties. And all in this in a social and historical context of denial of any rights of indigenous colonized societies. In the pivotal period that marked definitely the end of the 19th century and the entry to the 20th century. That's why we do consider that the nonviolence of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba is essentially divine and his pro pro prophetic actions is based on a genuine culture of peace. So uh, this is definitely not to do a biography or a historiography of the, of the life of the holy man from from there, but to understand his life and work entirely based on an ideal that is uh, the constant search for gods with a conscience and responsible commitment in society in the service of mankind. Pacifist desire, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba chose peaceful resistance. His only desire was to worship God and teach the beautiful and peaceful message of the revelation of Islam, an attitude that prompted the colonial administration to realize in 1910 that he was not an enemy at all. Still, still, he was put under house arrest in Jarem, current Jurbal, and there until he, he, he died. So even at the moment that they did realize that Shah Mahmoud was not an enemy at all, they were, they were scared. There was something uh, in their minds telling them, do not let this man free, because they thought that that was the solution. Um, each year, today, millions of his followers perform in commemoration of his departure in that exile in Gabon, a pilgrim to the holy city of Tuba that he founded. The pilgrim organized the 18th um, day of the lunar month of Safar, this is the Islamic calendar, and commonly called Grand Magal of Tuba, the Big Magal of Tuba, the Big Celebration of Tuba, which is marking the day that he went to deportation in Gabon. So this is, under, this is really important to, to relive that. Shah Ahmed Bamba asked for the disciples to pray and to, to, to meet this salvation on a day uh, that he, were, he was going to meet a suffering. So we were telling me that the time is ending. But um, um, to, to conclude my, my, my assertion, uh, our world has more than ever need examples of beings who have shown the way of peace through nonviolence and tolerance, and which are illustrated by the remedies that have made to sausages ours. Shia Ahmed Bamba is one of them. So I introduce you to him, and I commend you, and ask you to search and to learn about his deeds and philosophy. And he has made, by peaceful means, the challenge of extreme violence opposed to him in a context for more contrarian, cont um, contrarian excuse me, of human rights. But never in his life he responded by other terms than peace and tolerance because he knew what ignore many of mankind today. He knew that the foundation of struggle against existent, existential crisis, the key to success of the living together issue today, and the fulfillment of human beings in their religious, cultural, and social difference lies in the incarnation everywhere 
and for all of the world peace. So I invite you to definitely um, try to understand that perspective and for all and each of us to understand that definitely there are men and women in this world that made uh, a great and unabominable reality of this truth that we are talking about and that Islam is the base of all this and can truly understand that Islam is not a religion of terror or integrism or terrorism, not at all. The only issue of Islam is peace and only peace. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, our lady and dear sister, Sahna Mbake. It was indeed a most enlightening and educative presentation of one of the greatest personalities in Islam, uh, our very own Sheikh Al Khadim, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Sharif, the venerable religious leaders and personalities in your entourage. Um, I repeat the same greeting of peace, the greeting of Islam, Assalamu alaikum, to our dear guests, as well as to our brothers and sisters. Um, <coughs> we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty to have blessed us to be amongst the followers of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to be human beings in the first place, and uh, to be in a country today like Norway, the country of the Nobel Peace Prize. a country of peace and humanity. It has come very prominently in the presentation of our lady, our dear sister, that perhaps the most abused, if you like, or misunderstood or misinterpreted terminology in Islam is the terminology of the term jihad, thus making Islam generally a most misunderstood and therefore feared religion or way of life. And Muslims nowadays, the most mistrusted and suspected people on the face of the earth, which to my humble personal understanding and view indeed is anatomical to the very meaning and essence of Islam, which great personalities like Sheikh Ahmad Bamba epitomized in following the Quran and the Preston Sunnah traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Those who know me very well, especially in this country, in this part of the world, will remember the term Green Jihad, which is not my invention, but which I very strongly represent, especially in the Norwegian and international environmental circles. Something that I would like to reveal to you today that perhaps uh, some may not have known of me is that from my very early age, from childhood, one of the greatest personalities in Islam whose teachings and legacy shaped and formed my understanding of Islam, my world view and my entire personality is Sheikh Ahmad Bamba radiallahu anhu wa who was a model and an example and a spiritual guide for the person who taught me most of what I know in Islam. Then, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all praise be to Allah. If we are to, again, like the lady has highlighted, better understand the real meaning and essence of jihad in Islam, and appreciate 
the stance and interpretation and practice of great personalities like Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, we, radiallahu, we must go back to the very early days of Islam as taught by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu himself. She has rightly mentioned that the meaning of the word Islam itself is derived from the root in Arabic linguistically of Salama, from which we get Salam and Istislam and eventually Islam. Denoting peace basically and submission. Islam therefore representing the attainment of peace both within and without oneself through submission to the will of the creator and cherisher Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God Almighty. No doubt all of the prophets who came before the Prophet Muhammad as we are made to believe in all of these prophets and their teachings if we are to be Muslim from Adam to Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, up to Jesus Christ, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, and all of the prophets and messengers who came in between them. No doubt we, we see all of these as Muslims. And we see their genuine followers de facto as Muslims. Because their teachings, their practices, represented nothing but submission to the will of the Creator and Cherisher as the Prophet Muhammad taught in Makkah. And one of the first things, excuse me, this is not supposed to be very long, but I <clears throat> just want to do justice to the best of my ability to a brilliant presentation. The Prophet Muhammad when he started in Makkah, one of, in fact, the first thing that he said Amidst all of the chaos and confusion that was there, the illiteracy and lack of education and awareness and the violence perpetrated by the people at the time, the first thing that he announced was, O oh people, say la ilaha illallah, there is no deity but Allah, and you shall prosper, you shall attain to success. This brought him and the cluster of immediate faithful and followers around him, a lot of persecution, torture, in fact murder and assassination, ex exile and imprisonment. But for 13 good years of his 23 years of prophethood, his reaction was always one of peace and nonviolence. It was one of patience and fortitude. It was one of perseverance and determination. He taught them the lives of the prophets and messengers who lived before him and their followers as well as their adversaries and how they dealt with each and every one of these. He taught them about the reality of life after death. He taught them submission to the one God. He taught them the prophetic way. And he taught them to be just, to stand for peace until at length he and his followers had to migrate from Makkah to Medina in order not to be annihilated by the persecution of the people of Makkah. And to cut a long story short, when he arrived in Medina, that was known as Yafrib at the time, we, I reiterated here a report that was given and has been written in the annals of Islamic history. A report that was given by then a Jewish scholar who lived in Medina and became Muslim, Abdullah ibn Salam. He said, what made me accept Islam, apart from its similarity with the teachings of the Jewish Bible and tradition, he said, when I first beheld the countenance of the noble prophet, I recognized in him immediately a person who could not ever have been a liar. And then when he spoke, his first words attracted me the most. What did he say? 
So the first thing he said was, Ayyuhan Nas, O people, Afshu Salama. Afshu Salama. Spread peace. Spread peace amongst yourselves. Wa at'imu ta'ama. And feed the indigent. Provide food for the people. Wasilu al-arhama. And maintain good ties with your relatives, with your kith and kin. We will notice that all of the three first instructions that he gave upon arrival in Medina was to do with interhuman relationships. And then the fourth came. Wasallu bilayli wa nasi niyamun and stand up at night while people are asleep and pray, communicate with your Lord. If you do these four things, he said, Tadukhurul jannata bi salam, you shall enter paradise in peace. These are the core values of Islam. No doubt. Even after we go back to the word jihad very briefly. Nowadays, the interpretation that we see about jihad, and it has happened historically, not only now, although now we have it at a level, an extent that perhaps is unprecedented, the abuse of Islam and the word jihad, the misinterpretation of Islam and the term, the concept of jihad, the commitment of acts of senseless violence, terrorism and crime, for terrorism is just an un another word for murder and uh, capital crime, which takes place in the name of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first time after 13 years of 23 in Mecca and two years in Medina, when he was finally given the permission to stand up with his followers and defend themselves physically, thus the physical interpretation of jihad came. When we read this in the Quran, we will find out that and in the practice of the Prophet. But actually, physical jihad, which, has, which tends today to overshadow the entire concept of jihad, so wrongfully, that physical jihad, that is warfare in Islam, was instituted actually to protect and safeguard the freedom of religion. Never to perpetrate senseless violence or to dominate people and control their lives or to force them to become Muslims. Never. Allah refers to this in the Quran. If at all Allah had not made it so that he would check some people by means of others, he could, the ayah continued, many a synagogue, a temple, a church, mosques, places of prayer, where God's name, Allah's name, is often repeated and adored, would have been demolished. Thus, jihad in Islam, and physical jihad particularly, was instituted to protect and safeguard the freedom of religion, so that the Muslim would not be persecuted, as it happened in Mecca and in the first days in Medina, would be free to worship his Lord as he chose, and the non-Muslim would be free to worship his Lord as he chose. For the basic underlying principle is la ikraha fi din. There is no compulsion in religion. Whoever wishes, let them believe in Allah. Whoever wishes, let them disbelieve. The choice is yours. Though the consequences and the final judgment will be made by Allah and by no human being. This is why the Prophet ﷺ never failed to remind his sahaba, his immediate companions. Even when they went on expeditions, in defense of Islam, in, the, in physical jihad. Whenever they came back, he would say, 
رجعنا من الجهاد الأصغر إلى الجهاد الأكبر. We have come back from the minor jihad and the major jihad continues. The Sahaba asked when he first said this, but what could be this major jihad? And he explained to them very briefly, the major jihad is what you have been doing, what I've been teaching you and bringing you up, instilling in you as core values of Islam. All of these years is as our dear lady here interpreted in the words of Sheikh Hamad Bamba is moral and ethical upbringing, education, to fight against your own ego, to discipline yourself, to fight to remove all of the negative vices and vibes in yourself and to live in peace with human beings and all creatures around you. Then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, one of the greatest personalities who epitomized these values in Islam and from whom the entire world today can learn and benefit, especially Muslims, is as our sister has to taken us into his life in great detail, is Sheikhna Ahmadu Bamba, Khadimu Rasul, Radiallahu Anu Wardahu, Wa Sallallahu Ala Sidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam. Jazakum Allah Khairan Wa Salaam Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Sallam. for a very brilliant uh, presentation. And also, and also my Imam on a very brilliant uh, response. Um, you have presented here a very, very exhaustive um, form of Islam or non-violent form of Islam that our Sheikh Bamba has practiced. Excellent as it is, my question is um, what mechanisms do we have, do our Murid, bro uh, Murid brothers have um, in making so this non-violent form of Islam, I mean, is propagated all over the world, in joining uh, global efforts against the fight against terrorism and all what not, because we know those who are promoting the violent form of Islam, they're using the petrodollars and they're going all over the world in promoting this violent form of Islam. So we have this Islam that is non-violent, very peaceful. Um, what mechanisms are in place to make sure that um, uh, you work with different stakeholders in different parts of the world? For example, here in Norway, um, they have an action plan of fighting against uh, radicalization or a fighting against a violent form of, uh, of terrorism. What mechanisms do our Morid Foundation, our Morid brothers have in, in collaborating with these different stakeholders in making sure that we, we arrest uh, this uh, terrorism that is going around the world? Thank you. Je suis je suis un peu plus de temps. Je suis un 
ñom ñokoy jëm xam ndax fofu la solution yi nek lool la japp man kon yëmul rek ci jaar imam seydi wax na fi legi yëmul rek rek ci xex bobu ñu muy wax imam seydi wax na ni mom dañ ko rañi ci limu tudé green jihad manam jihad vert dama japp seen tuba man comme solution globale ci problème yi nga xam ni aduba ngi jankon tek mom xam nga bo genné jihad ci walu xex ni rayanté ni ko ni ko ni ko baxé déggé bu mu waxé green man dama yoy dama yobbu fu sori daf ma yobbu ci walu environnement ma japp ni aduna bi tam aduna bi c'est un tout manam muno développer aduna jël ben patch rek dox ci kon ci walu environnement sax dama japp ni seigne touba andi solution kon yakar na ni euh dama rox sane kilifa bu baax muno ma touba bi seigne tiono ak aduna bi sax moy ñak xam kan moy seigne touba ak ñak ko jang waye solution yépp ñu ci kon dima tontu mbokk mi moy muy norvégien ak ñeneen nañ jëm xam seigne touba te ñew ñu ñu wan leen ni ni ñaam solution ci problème yi nga xam moom la ñu jangonté ñi ngi sant ñepp di leen gërëm salaam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh shukr li man kulli bihi sara lu hurdun du nu sukhti da sar sara lu sanaa'i wal bani bila saqatin Musadalim min bani Daiman Sara Lillahi kulli lada abari makrumatan Min arsa alli wa fi ajama man Sara Inna lazina ila sar Sara khat khasdu sharati farkha darin an Sara Inna lazina ila sar Sara khat khasdu Siarati farakha darina usara nifali wibkha i wofou sibra anan bikou ni khadim al mustafa tatabayyinu nasihatu fi sir wal dawri badat bi khada li rahmanu sitran yuhasinu nawaytu rida rahmani fi khidmati liman ila khin sakha man laysu sunu نفال زوانا من نبلا وحصدا وزيخ الى اخر الذي يتكهن نو الوايد القهار عن العذاب فرادا وما سنا ادبروا سمالينا نففت بهاردا حسيدا صفت على اسراما غير مغني مكن نزفت كل ما لقي التهرب وسنتها ان شاء ربي ابين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين